Hello, everyone, and welcome back to uh, Let's Program with Santier, and we are continuing Timeline Program in Part 3. Um, I do not expect to be done with this one in, in this part, by the way. Uh, the Color Mixer, I expect to be one of the shorter programs that I'll make. Um, toying around with some other ideas for the next one, but you know, you'll see what those are when those come to fruition. So... I've still got my weird toolbox for unknown reasons, but I need a timeline date control because we need to know when this uh, timeline event is happening. Uh, this is a standard event, and standard events need two more things, so I'm going to go ahead and put a... I need two text boxes. One, copy, paste, ah, 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 for two. So this is going to be the name field, uh, and let's just go ahead and grab a label. And excuse me, excuse me for the burp. Put name up here. Um, and let's drag this down a little bit. I want this to kind of be right there, and then this to be underneath it. Okay. Name. Text changed. Um, actually, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, so I'm going to uh, come back here, events, text changed, and I'm going to um, clear that out. And the reason why I'm going to do that uh, is because I want to actually come in here. I want to go name.text equals owner dot name and then I want to go name dot text changed does stuff and the reason why I'm doing this is because then I can go um, owning events dot name equals name dot text and when I do it this way the key and very critical thing that happens with this is this cannot trigger until it's been added. So I can set the name here and I don't have to do weird stuff to prevent it from changing the name when I assign the name to it and whatever. It's just cleaner. Um, I prefer it this way. Probably not strictly speaking necessary, but I kind of prefer to do it this way because then I'm not doing like weird multi-calling things back and like setting the name back to itself when I do things or whatever. Um, Okay, and then I'm going to do a similar thing. This text box is going to be called description. So that's what this is. It's going to be a multi-line. And I'm going to fill this up. I'm going to go ahead and put another label on there. And this label is going to just read description. Um, okay. And then I'm going to do a similar thing here, where I go... <laughs> Human beings sneeze, folks. That is what I just did. Um, okay, and this is going to be owner.description. Okay. Um, and then I will go down here and go... Description.textChange plus equals blah blah blah. And then just do owning event dot description equals description dot text. Cool beans. Now I need to where's my whatever. If if in doubt, add your thing. Uh view code. Um Okay. So here's the thing that I want to not do. I don't want to do the same sort of thing that I did with the other stuff because that will cause it to go like error, error, cannot assign thing, can, cannot call this function when it has a parameter in the auto-generated stuff when I'm actually assigning this as a control as opposed to program, programmatically assigning them. So um, what I'm going to do is actually let's go, well, yeah, we can go right here. Um, timeline date uh, owning date equals null. And then 
we're going to actually go in here and we're going to go raw date dot enabled equals false. You could also do that in the control, but I'm in the code, so I'm just going to do it there. Um, easy enough to see if I come in here and change things. So then I'm going to do public void um, set owning date. Date owner. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a few different things. Uh, first, I'm going to set this to in whoop too many button cells down. Uh, okay. I'm going to set this to internal to make the IntelliSense happy. And then I'm going to set owning date equals owner. Hooray. Um, and then uh, raw date dot value equals owner dot raw value, as it should. And then I'm going to go raw date dot enabled equals true. So that way you can edit it. This will just kind of technically lock it out until you assign this into it, but uh, the user shouldn't really see that. Um, but that's how I want to do it. And then raw date dot value changed. Um, oh, technically I should probably add uh, if uh, owning date does not equal null message box dot show error trying to assign a date to a control that already has a date assigned to it cool that's all I need from that I don't expect this to show up um, but I'm including it for thoroughness sake um, and then this should just go owning date dot raw value equals int raw date dot value. Okay. So now I can come back to my standard event control. Let's just go ahead and close those. I don't need them right now. Middle click closes tabs. It works in your browser as well. Uh, don't close this tab yet though. I'm not done. Um, and then I need to go uh, oh. I need to go over here. I'm going to call this date. Ah. Date dot. Um, okay. Tell us, you can do better than this. That owning date. Um, owner dot date. Yes, no. Well, IntelliSense isn't exploding at me. So let's go ahead and run build. Uh, okay. Yep. This is going to be a recurring problem if I don't change the name of that thing. Oh, boy. So the question is, is this worth... dealing with. How did I ever? If I just prepended everything with global, this wouldn't be a problem. Um, OK, so our standard event control is now in a good spot. So let's go ahead and go to our form. And standard event control. So. I need to do a couple of things. First thing is I need to make a standard event. I'm just going to call this EV for event. Or no, SE because it's a standard event. Equal new standard event. Doesn't do a whole lot yet, but um, now this is really important. I need to look at what tab I'm on. Um, Timelines dot uh, tab. Select a tab right here. I need this guy. And the reason why I need this guy is because I need to know what timeline I'm adding this event to. Remember, I can have multiple timelines. 
So something that's probably going to be really critical then is I probably need to go right here. I need to go main tab main timeline dot tag equals main timeline. So I'm going to want to go to all of these tabs that I make, and I'm going to want to set their tag to be the timeline. This is just an object. Um, it can just be whatever. Um, dot tag, and then what I'm going to do is make a timeline per timeline equals timeline this bit. Okay. Now I can go occur timeline dot uh, add events. Let's see. Okay. And then that will add this standard event to this particular timeline. Um, hopefully it doesn't explode on me. That would be good. Now, I also need to add. Um, let's make this um, okay. Let's do this. Let's do this function. Void add event to timeline. Um, do timeline control. Um. And we're going to do this with a uh, tab page tab. OK. And then add event timeline control timelines dot selected tab. Doing it this way, because I'm going to need to do it down here as well. Uh, technically, this stuff needs to go in another blah blah blah, but uh, most of this is just gonna be kind of copy pasted and adding things. But okay, um, I need uh, tab dot controls dot con uh, controls zero. I need to make this a timeline control TC equals timeline control. They should only have the one control TC dot. Oh, need to go comma um, event base um, event. Uh, we'll just call it E. Can't call it E up here because reasons that can be apparent, but so I want to go TC. Ooh, how am I gonna set this up? Um Okay, so this is what will happen is I'm like, okay, now I need to add a thing to this timeline control. So I'm gonna actually do public void add event um, control I think do I need to um because I can just do get control there or I can just go ahead and do whoa not that um event base EV. Okay. Probably needs to be internal. Okay, so then I'm going to want to call this because this is going to need to do some repositioning stuff. Um, so TC dot add event E. Okay, so now we're kind of passing things around. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so our timeline control is then going to go ev.getControl 
Remember, this will get us um, our, uh, I'm just going to call this C, and then I need to go, um, ooh, how do I want to handle this? Because I can, um, Okay, so right now this is going to be able to add a control to this thing eventually, but I need to figure out how I'm going to be actually structuring this. So uh, I tend to not be a, a super in-depth planner, as you might have been able to pick up. Uh, it'll be okay. It will be okay. So I'm going to worry about that in a moment. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just take this giant pile of code, and I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to make this from a standard event a split timeline um, okay so this is where things get a little gnarly because I need to do basically all the rest of this same stuff uh, I can change this name to like st uh, then I need to go here I'm gonna go st and yep okay so this is saint new timeline um and let's see. So the next course of action is going to be, so this should add the event to the current timeline. Then I need to go um, tab page, EP equals new tab page. Let's see, I believe this lets me Yes, yes, this is the part where I go st.name, because this is the name of the timeline. Um, and then ep. Okay, so something that I'm actually going to want to do that's making me rethink how I'm structuring this a little bit. Um... Okay. Okay, so there's a couple of different restructures I'm going to need to do to be able to make this work the way that I want to. So, the first thing that I'm going to want to do um, is I'm going to want to set this tag to be the uh, split timeline dot timeline because otherwise this will break and this will break. Um, but there's a couple of important things I'm going to need to be able to do. Uh, so I'm going to need to be able to, and I'm going to just do, go ahead and want to do this uh, momentarily, but I'm going to need to make a new user control. You know, a new user control, right? Yeah, another one. I'm going to add it here, user control. And I'm going to call this event control base. And this is going to do a couple of important things for me. So the first thing is that right here where this says user control, nope, this is now going to be an event control base. Okay, it's no longer user control. Now I think I might need to go into the designer stuff to be able to edit some things there as well. Um, let's see what happens if I try to compile this right now. Nope, that succeeds. So this one apparently controls that. Um, and then I'm also going to need to do go into the standard view code. And again, this is going to go from a user control to an event control base. Okay. So this is really important because what I'm going to need to be able to do in an event control is I'm going to need to be able to get the date. Yeah. So, um, gonna do it like this: public um, virtual um, let's see timeline date date get return null. This one doesn't have a date. Uh, why isn't, oh. Internal. And you're going to see a lot of internal. A lot of internal. 
Uh, the other thing that I might want to add is some some other stuff with um, things, but whatever. We're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, what we're going to do right now, we're going to add this one. We're going to override uh, date. And we're going to replace this with return owning event dot date. Okay. Um, so that's all the changes that we needed to make to that. This one's going to need a little bit more stuff. So this is also going to need an override date and return owning split timeline dot date because that's also very important for this. Now I need to then go back to here uh, and remember how I gave it an event base. Well, I'm going to need to change this to an event control base. Um, only this is going to be in event con controls dot event control base. Um, and this is going to make all sorts of things explode because they're not happy. But this can be se dot get control and saint dot get control. Now both of these are going to need to be modified. Um, oh, this whole file is just going to, need to be added. Okay. I'm going to edit that file in a sec uh, by going over here. Okay, so remember how this said control, get control. This is now going to be event control base because you guessed it, that's the type of control I need to return now. Um, so this is an evolving process. Uh, and I'll need to do more with that later, but that's going to be later time. Okay, so there's a big reason why I need to do this. Uh, and that reason is because I need to be able to update the name of the tab when I change the name of the timeline. So, water break. What I'm going to want to do, to do then is, uh, okay, let's go to this definition. This then is going to need to change from this to, you guessed it, an event controls dot event control base. Um, I'm going to call this an ECB. Uh, and now this doesn't have anything particular that it's doing, but I can go ECB dot date. And if this does not equal null, I can go ECB dot date dot raw value. And this is going to allow me to be able to get information for positioning this. Um, so I'm not quite sure 100% how I'm going to structure these things just yet, but I have a raw idea for how I'm going to do it. It's probably not going to position things proportional, but I'm probably going to have... Um, some different sort of render option of like how I'm showing stuff to kind of be able to toggle things around a little bit. That's something that I'm going to kind of probably work out in a slightly more future episode for like alternate things that I'm showing. Because I'm probably just going to start with a very simple implementation that does only what I exactly need. Um, so anyway, uh, the event control base currently, I don't need this because we're never going to see that. Um, that's entirely to exist as a base class. Um, so the split timeline control is going to need to have a public um, tab page timeline tab. Defaults to null, but we'll be doing stuff with that in a bit. Right here, in fact, because right here, what I'm going to actually want to do is grab the split timeline. Okay. Um, event controls dot split timeline control. Uh, STC equals ST dot get control. Control. Uh, and then 
Actually, I need to cast it into a new event. Controls split. Okay. So I need to cast it into a new event. Controls split timeline control because by default that returns you know, the, the base thing. So SCC. Um, and then I need to go uh, SCC dot uh, timeline tab equals ta the tab page. Okay. Now there's something else I need to do, which is to go to our timelines, and I need to uh, tab pages dot add, uh, and I should just be able to add TP. Okay, so we have what five-ish minutes left in this particular episode. Um, so let's just see. This should hopefully load and run and all that jazz. So if I add a split timeline, now we get an unnamed event over here. Um, So this is definitely not done yet, but it is, as you might notice, a massive step forward. So the other thing that I need to do with this tab page that I didn't do yet is I need to go tab page dot, um, so I need to make a timeline control TC, uh, TLC for timeline control, equals new timeline control and TLC dot, uh, timeline or timeline control. Uh, that's how we set them, right? Yep. Equals st dot timeline. And then we need to go to our, uh, let's see, tlc dot location equals 0 0.00 because we want that to be in the upper left corner. Uh, tlc dot size equals, uh, let's actually do this. I know I'm moving things around a little bit. Um, okay, I'm just gonna move this whole timeline control business down here. Um, and I'm gonna comment this in a second. So add the tab page for this timeline. Add the Timeline control to the tab page for this timeline. Okay, dot size equals um, TP dot client size. And I also need to do, do it right here actually. TP dot um, controls dot add. Um, DLC. Okay. So now if I run this um, and I add a split timeline, you'll notice they're both, no, this one's brighter. So, but it, it should be adding it, but what I might be having is the client size might not be appropriately set by this point. Um, so if I check right here, this client size, oh, maybe it's appropriate. Yeah, okay, well, whatever. And this thing's at zero, zero. So I guess it added it, but whatever. Um, but we needed to make sure to add that uh, timeline control. And then I can add a standard event, it doesn't crash. Um, so those are currently not doing a whole lot, but Anyway, making them do something is going to be a bit of a future focus. Um, so the next major step that I have in this is finishing off the split timeline control, which is over here. Um, and it's going to need a couple of things that I know right away that I'm going to need. So I'm going to need a timeline date control. You'll notice that defaults grayed out. 
and let's just call this state. It's going to need a label. It says name. That is that can just be label one. Excuse me. This is where I change it to say name. Uh, I don't usually worry about naming my labels if I don't need to reference them because that is a waste of keystrokes. Okay, so something that I actually really want to make sure I'm doing, uh, by the way, with this is I'm going to um, I'm going to run this episode long enough to kind of like finish filling this thing out. But uh, so this is going to be name. Now I want to go to our standard event control. And when I look at this, I notice it's 320 wide. So I want to make this one also 320 wide. Uh, the reason is because having that consistent will allow things to line up nicely. Whereas if I did not have that consistent, they would not line up nicely. Um, so that's all the information that we actually need for one of these guys. Um, so if I go back into the code, I can go and say name. Uh, so I need to date dot uh, whatever that thing was called again, because and this will be fixed when I restart Visual Studio, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, so if I go to this guy and I view the code, I can check it's set owning date. Date dot set owning date, and it might be exploding because I have this thing floating over here too. But um, owner dot date, and then name equals owner dot name, and then name dot uh, text changed. Oop. Um, dot text. Sorry, I forgot a thing, and then. Uh, Owning split timeline dot name equals now this is um this is the first part equals name dot text and then if timeline tab does not equal null timeline tab dot text uh, yep equals owning split timeline dot name. Now, uh, in the next episode, when I start getting these things showing up in the timeline control, what we will see is that when you name a split timeline in the owning timeline, it will change the timelines tab. So that, uh, therefore, it does exactly what I want, hopefully, and we'll find out next time. But I've gone on long enough, so thank you, and uh, look forward to the next episode, which yeah, the schedule that I've been doing these in should be in a week from this one. Alrighty, everyone, take care, and bye-bye.